Ramadan, you are pleased to be back with us Yanis, for today's episode with me, Vanessa. Singapore and China vow to bring bilateral ties to new level. Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi and Singaporean Foreign Minister Vivian Balakrishnan vowed to bring the bilateral ties to a new level with more communication and cooperation. During meeting in Bali, Indonesia, on the sidelines of the group of 20 foreign ministers, Wong says Chinese-Singapore high-level cooperation has become a front-runner in the region and is leading trends of the times, calling for further strategic communication to bring bilateral relations to a new level. Balakrishnan hopes to restore offline high-level exchanges at an early date and work with China to prepare for meetings under the Singapore-China bilateral cooperation mechanism. He says Singapore welcomes and supports China in applying to join the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership and the Digital Economic Partnership Agreement. He congratulated China on celebrating the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong's return to the motherland, saying it's great to see Hong Kong restore stability and that he is confident that Hong Kong will embrace a brighter future and make greater achievements under the new terms Hong Kong's Special Administrative Region Government. Wong said China stands ready to maintain high-level exchanges with Singapore and thanked Singapore's support for China to join the CPTPP and DEPA and China is willing to maintain communication with all relevant parties on this issue. Russia says will deepen defense cooperation with Myanmar. Russia's defense ministry says Russia and Myanmar are to deepen their defense cooperation after a meeting in Moscow between Myanmar's military leader Myung Ho Lein and top Russian defense officials. The ministry in a statement says that the meeting in Russia was on a private visit. The statement read, the meeting confirmed the mutual disposition to consistently build up multifaceted cooperation between the military departments of the two countries. Thomas Andrews, the United Nations human rights expert on Myanmar, says in February that Russia had supplied the junta with drones, two types of fighter jet and two kinds of armored vehicle, one with air defense system. Chaos has gripped Myanmar since a military coup in early 2021 and a decade of tentative democracy, triggering protests that the junta's troops suppressed with little force. The United Nations has said its investigation showed the military has committed mass killings and crimes against humanity. The junta has said it's seeking to restore peace and order. Wang Yi discussed cooperation with Jokowi during a visit to the ASEAN Secretariat. Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi discussed cooperation with Indonesian President Joko Widodo in Jakarta and paid a visit to ASEAN Secretariat. Wang and Widodo started off their meeting by talking about Russia and Ukraine crisis. This was also mentioned during Wang's speech at the ASEAN Secretariat in Jakarta. He says the world should not be pressured to take sides, instead working together to find a solution to resolve the conflict. They went on to discuss China and Indonesia relations, especially in terms of trade, with both saying they would like to see more Indonesian products enter the Chinese market in the coming years. They also discussed several ongoing projects between China and Indonesia, including efforts to complete the Highway Speed Railway, one of the biggest investment projects in Indonesia. Aside from that, ways to curb the COVID-19 pandemic were also at the top of the agenda. Many countries, including Indonesia, are still bouncing back from the impact of the pandemic. China completely supports Indonesia in building a regional vaccine center and is ready to help the country increase its vaccine production if necessary. Overall, Foreign Minister Wang Yi mentioned that he would like China to be more involved with Indonesia in multiple areas such as politic, economic, and cultural. He believes a closer relationship with Indonesia will not only help both countries grow stronger, but also maintain stability in the ASEAN region. Philippines and China agreed to upgrade cooperation and resolve the differences through a dialogue. Philippine President Ferdinand Romualdez Marcos met with visiting Chinese State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi in Manila, agreeing to upgrade bilateral cooperation and deal with the South China Sea issue through dialogue and communication. The Philippine President says China is the Philippines' largest trading partner and most important development partner and both sides have initiated fruitful cooperation in all fields. After the outbreak of the COVID-19, China was the first to supply vaccines and protective materials to the Philippines. 
Marcos says the Philippine hopes to continue pushing forward bilateral cooperation with China in politics, economy and trade, education, culture and other areas, so as to enrich the connotation of their comprehensive strategic cooperation. The Philippines is willing to carry out candid communication with the Chinese side to find a friendly solution to the issue, which is the right way for the two countries to get along, Marcos said. China and the Philippines should enhance dialogue and communication and properly handle sensitive issues so as to let maritime cooperation be the main tone of their discussion and handling of maritime affairs. During the meeting, Wong also expressed China's appreciation for the contribution of former President Rodrigo Duterte to secure a complete turnaround and enhancement in China-Philippine relations during his six-year tenure. Russia meets with its Vietnamese counterpart, calls for effort from all parties in the world to protect international law. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov meets with his Vietnamese counterpart, Bui Tan Son, and called on all parties in the world to make efforts to protect international laws as the world is evolving in a complicated manner. Lavrov was speaking through a translator at a meeting with Son in Hanoi. His comments come as Russia has been accused by Western countries of breaching international law through its invasion of Ukraine. European Union leaders have urged Moscow to abide by an order by the International Court of Justice telling Russia to withdraw from Ukraine. Vietnam and Russia have close ties dating back to the Soviet era and Hanoi has not so far condemned Russia's war in Ukraine, which Moscow calls a special operation. The Russian foreign minister is due to fly on to Indonesia to attend the meeting of G20 foreign ministers. Malaysia and China pledged to strengthen coordination between the two countries. Malaysian Prime Minister Ismail Sabri Yaqub and visiting Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi met in Kuala Lumpur and pledged to strengthen coordination and connectivity between their countries. During the meeting, Wang says China and Malaysia are strategic partners who enjoy mutually beneficial cooperation and traditional friendship. China is willing to take the opportunity of the 10th anniversary of their comprehensive strategic partnership in 2023 and the 15th anniversary of bilateral diplomatic relations in 2024 to set new directions, goals and priorities for the next stage development of bilateral ties. For his part, Ismail Sabri says Malaysia is the first ASEAN country establishing diplomatic ties with China and has seen fruitful results from bilateral practical cooperation and smooth progress in major projects. Malaysia is willing to deepen bilateral cooperation and connectivity in various fields and explore an active role in pan-Asian railway cooperation, he said. Ismail Sabri says he welcomes more Chinese enterprises to invest in Malaysia and conduct cooperation in 5G and other high-tech areas, helping the country realize innovative, inclusive and sustainable development. Malaysia is willing to work with China to enhance communication and coordination on multilateral affairs, jointly cope with food security and other pressing global challenges, and jointly safeguard peace, stability, fairness and justice. Wong is in Malaysia for an official visit, the final leg of his Asia tour, which has taken him to Myanmar, Thailand, the Philippines and Indonesia. Indonesian ambassador to China praised role of multilateralism in boosting regional trade. Indonesian ambassador to China, Jauhari Oratmangun, has highlighted the importance of multilateralism, which has allowed for closer relation and trade cooperation between China and the ASEAN. Speaking in a recent interview with China Global Television Network, Marat Mang spoke on the significance of the two-day group of G20 foreign ministers meeting, which concluded last week in Bali, Indonesia. We are very happy to see that all of the 20 foreign ministers of the G20 came to Bali, as well as other countries that invited by us. During the meeting, they came up with the two major decisions. Everybody believes that multilateralism cooperation should play a role in this current situation. And the second one, how at least to ease the food and energy crisis. Multilateralism not only provide us with the equality, but also uh, provided us with the uh, trust. Uh, ASEAN centrality that has been his interview also followed Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi's visits to several Southeast Asian countries last week. 
On relations between China and ASEAN, Orak Mangum says, the two sides enjoy a partnership that has lasted for three decades, and this long-standing partnership has been further elevated to a higher level thanks to efforts made by both sides. He highlighted the deepening economic ties between China and the 10-member regional grouping, citing a huge trade volume between the two sides, which has been substantial growth in the past three decades. Orat Mang also commented on Wang's Asia tour, which took the Chinese foreign minister to Myanmar, Thailand, the Philippines, Indonesia, and Malaysia, saying it is the right thing to do boost relations between China and countries in the region. Myanmar junta leaders meet head of Russia's space agency in Moscow. Myanmar's military leader, Ming Ohlain, meet with the head of Russia's space agency, Dmitry Rogozin, in Moscow. According to the Telegram channel of the agency, Roscosmos, the delegations discussed the status and prospects of Russia-Myanmar cooperation, including the field of remote probing, the creation of small spacecraft, as well as the training of personnel for Myanmar's space industry with the help of Russian universities. Uh, Lang met with top Russian defense officials, where Russia and Myanmar agreed to deepen their defense cooperation. In addition, Thomas Andrew, the United Nations human rights expert on Myanmar, say in February that Russia had supplied the junta with drones, two types of fighter jet, and two kinds of armored vehicle, one with the air defense systems. Chaos has gripped Myanmar since a military coup in early 2021 ended a decade of tentative democracy, triggering protests that the junta's troops suppressed with little force. The United Nations has said its investigations show the military has committed mass killings and crimes against humanity. The Junta has said it's seeking to restore peace and order. Vietnam and China hold meeting on bilateral cooperation. The 14th meeting of the China-Vietnam Steering Committee for Bilateral Cooperation in Nanning, South China's Guangxi Zhuang Autonomous Region, the meeting was pro-chaired by Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi and Vietnamese Deputy Prime Minister Pam Binh Minh. Wong says China and Vietnam have significant domestic political agendas this year. It is necessary to strengthen coordination, deepen the exchange of experience in governing the country, and enhance legislative bodies and party exchanges. He affirms the two sides should give full play to their geographical proximity and complementary industrial advantages and promote the upgrading of economic cooperation and trade exchange between the two countries. Pam Bin Min says friendship with China is Vietnam's strategic choice. Vietnam is willing to work with China to consolidate strategic mutual trust and promote cooperation. Both sides agree to properly handle sensitive maritime issues and promote bilateral maritime cooperation for greater achievements. And we have reached the end of today's program. We will be back with the latest fresh and up-to-date news soon. Have a lovely weekdays ahead.